In 2014, Cabbage turned 50. In 1962, uh, Dr. Sabaston at Duke um, attempted a coronary bypass operation. The patient didn't survive. And in 1964, Dr. Garrett, Ed Garrett, who has now sadly passed away, Dr. DeBakey, who's also passed away, and Dr. Howe, who has also passed away, um, operated on the first survivor. Ed Garrett was the surgeon of record at the time. Simultaneously, in Russia, in 1964, Professor Kolosov performed the first Lima to the LED bypass using a thoracotomy. Very few people know that, and very even fewer know the fact that he used an anastomotic device for that, which is extraordinary considering the time that it was done. Okay, I'm trying. You're going to have to help me here. Yeah. Should I just say next slide? Uh, which button do I hit? The green button? The green. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. Okay. So in 1964, that first cabbage that was done, this is a glass slide. Uh, well, it is taken from a glass slide, the original glass slide um, that... Can I use the cursor over here? Yeah. Nothing's happening. Well, anyway, this is a... Sorry? Yeah. So this is a glass slide um, uh, taken from the original glass slide of the uh, angiogram and a pictorial representation of that first patient. Uh, and it's very difficult to see because the quality of the angiogram is not that great. But you can barely see, maybe with the eye of faith, on this one, the post-op uh, 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 film, that here is the opacification of the saphenous vein craft that was placed <laughs> to the LAD. Uh, the evolution of cabbage uh, really goes back to the early 1950s when James Gibbon um, invented the cardiopulmonary bypass <laughs> machine. That's a fascinating story in itself, and um, 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 uh, there was a lot of industry involvement uh, with that. Uh, IBM was involved in it. Uh, angiography uh, by Soans in 1962 was obviously very important in this, and then cardioplegia in the early 1970s, Mark Brainbridge at St. Thomas's. Uh, in London and uh, Brett Schneider in Germany were really instrumental in the development of the cardioplegic solutions which have been used since that time. More and more people are using now a newer formulation that was, uh, 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 that's been brought into the mainstream by Pedro Del Nido uh, at Boston's Chil Boston Children's. Off-pump cabbage in the 1990s onwards, I'm not going to talk about different types of uh, or different methods of performing coronary bypass surgery except to mention that there are. And minimally invasive cabbage uh, really uh, uh, began in the early uh, 2000s. Now, the evidence for coronary artery bypass grafting really uh, exists, the basis exists in three large trials in the 70s and the 80s. And they compared cabbage to medical therapy, cabbage to medical therapy. Less than 10% of the patients received a Lima graft, and medical therapy then was not what it is today. Uh, and these are the studies. You must look them up if you haven't already done so. It's an essential basis for what you do. You must uh, uh, um, uh, uh, take the time to read them. The VA study showed that with patients with triple vessel disease and, a, and impaired ventricular function, uh, a cabbage was clearly superior. The European coronary surgery study uh, showed that in patients with left main triple vessel disease, uh, double vessel disease with a proximal LAD lesion, cabbage was superior. And in the coronary artery surgery study, they showed that patients with triple vessel disease and an impaired ejection fraction, cabbage was superior. <laughs> Um, in 1994, uh, Yusuf uh, uh, really did a very nice meta-analysis of all the trials that had been published up to date, uh, which is also worth looking up because it's a great summary. And basically, he updated seven randomized controlled trials of cabbage versus medical treatment. No notice I'm focusing on medical treatment, um, which looked at a, a large number of patients and showed that, broadly speaking, cabbage improved survival and symptoms, and the benefits were most readily seen in patients with uh, severe uh, triple vessel disease, left main stenosis, or impaired left ventricular uh, function. 
Now, it's, it, it's important to note that the benefits of cabbage in these trials were underestimated for severe disease because most patients who were enrolled were relatively low risk. The results were on an intention to treat basis only and 40% of them crossed uh, from medical to cabbage therapy and only 10% received an IMA. There was no survival benefit in these trials that were shown for patients with uh, single uh, or double vessel disease and normal LV functions. <clears throat> Now, this is a timeline of the trials uh, in cabbage, and I'm just throwing this up over here. This talk will be available to you uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. You have to go to YouTube and type in DICET, D-I-C-E-T, all caps, and then it will give you a library of all the talks that have been recorded in the past. Last year's talks are online now. This year's talks will go online uh, hopefully in the next few weeks. But you can look at this from 1964 going on to the present, and essentially on the bottom you've got a variety of trials that compared revascularization of any kind, whether it's cabbage or PCI, versus medical therapy. And on the top, trials that have been conducted that compared PCI to cabbage. The ones in blue are plain old balloon angioplasty. The ones in red over here were bare metal stents and the ones in green, uh, which really started in the late, uh, I, I guess, uh, 2005 onwards, uh, have all focused on drug-eluting stents. The major morbidity of cabbage, of course, is stroke, uh, which is multifactorial. We're not going to go into this. Myocardial infarction, pulmonary uh, and renal complications. And you can calculate the specific risks with the SDS calculator, uh, which is based, uh, 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 which is, which basically culls information from the SDS database that has over one and a half million patients. Uh, all you have to do is Google SDS risk calculator. The top hit that comes up is the SDS risk calculator. Doubtless you've all started using it already in your clinics as we do. The overall mortality is 2% for all comers and about half a percent in the lowest risk group. There's a variety of conduits that are used, and I'm not going to speak to this because I believe there is going to be a talk on this. Uh, there's on-pump cabbage, off-pump cabbage, minimally invasive techniques, and a hybrid philosophy, which is still something that's being batted around. We don't know where the combination of cabbage, minimally invasive cabbage, and PCI fits in. It's another subject uh, uh, altogether. We won't go into that. Now, PCI claims equivalence to cabbage and therefore claims parallel benefit over medical therapy. Uh, the COURAGE trial, which is an important trial for you to look up, New England Journal of Medicine, April of 2007, uh, uh, looked at about 2,500 patients and they randomized them to PCI with optimal medical therapy versus optimal medical therapy only. And they showed that there was no difference in death or myocardial infarction with up to seven year follow up. PCI was, however, better at relieving angina, but not myocardial infarction or death. Now, symptoms from coronary disease are very disabling, and PCI was shown to be clearly superior at relieving symptoms. So in that group of patients, it's a valuable thing to employ. <coughs> Uh, the syntax trial, um, uh, which is the most important trial of cabbage versus PCI that you need to be aware of, and you must be familiar with this, uh, it's a great trial. Uh, the five-year results were published in 2013, and it's basically a randomized controlled trial of drug-eluting stents versus cabbage, 85 centers in Europe and the U.S., all comers to mimic the real world. Uh, almost 4,500 patients were screened, and an astonishing 71% of these were enrolled. This is unheard of, unheard of in any other trial that you look at. And it really goes a long way towards uh, bolstering the results uh, uh, that we see from this trial. 58% um, of these that were enrolled were randomized equally, and the remainder were enrolled in a registry. Most of these were deemed to be too complex for PCI, all of them were screened by a heart team that consisted of an interventional cardiologist, a surgeon, and a non-interventional <laughs> cardiologist, and the composite endpoint uh, of death, stroke, MI, and repeat revascularization was what was used to look at the differences. Now, very importantly, and I think this may have been the most important contribution of the syntax trial, they developed a score, the syntax score, with which you could assess the severity of 
coronary artery disease. Up until this point, the severity of CAD was assessed by eyeballing it. You'd have two people and say, well, he's got severe CAD and he's got not so severe CAD. Now we had a method to actually score it, and this has been a huge contribution. So this is a syntax score diagram, and it's, and, and, and it's all available online. But essentially, there's a specific system that they have for looking at specific vessels and the, and the degree of severity in each vessel. And at a certain point in that vessel, they assign a score to it. Um, and, and, and this leads you, you know, to the obvious conclusion that there is three-vessel disease and there's three-vessel disease. So here you've got a patient who's got a syntax score of 21, which is relatively low, because they've got focal lesions that are severe, but really not much else in the distal vessels. Whereas here you've got a patient with a syntax score of 52, who's got the focal lesions, but also has tandem lesions, and has got severe diffuse disease in other vessels. So clearly it's a different type of patient, and the syntax score recognized that. And using the score, they were able to show that in all comers at five years, cabbage had a clear advantage um, in terms of uh, uh, MACE uh, outcomes. Uh, but when you broke it down into the various uh, 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 terciles of low, uh, middling, and high scores, they demonstrated that in patients with a low syntax score, there was no difference. And this is a very important conclusion because PCI has a real role in the treatment of patients with coronary artery disease. The important thing is to select out which patients will benefit. And now we can say that patients with a low syntax score are more likely to benefit from PCI. Um, or at least more likely to have an equivalent benefit from PCI than they would from coronary bypass surgery. Intermediate score, the difference was as I showed earlier, and for the patients with a high score, the difference was the greatest with cabbage showing the greatest advantage. So the treatment decisions of the individual patients should be continued, sorry, should be made in consultation between the patient and the heart team, and the syntax score really is an, is an important means to be able to direct your decision making. Now the Freedom Trial, New England Journal 2012, all these references are readily uh, uh, um, available. Uh, looked at cabbage versus PCI and diabetics. A large number of patients, um, only 1,900 were enrolled, 6%. So it calls into question the external validity of the trial. But certainly within the context of the trial, um, uh, they were able to show that, uh, that uh, that uh, all-cause death, MI, or revascularization was lower in cabbage versus PCI, with very significant differences being demonstrated. The only exception was that the stroke rate for cabbage was shown to be higher than that with PCI. There are various registry data as well that are out there. This is the New York State Registry showing that for three-vessel disease, uh, the adjusted survival for cabbage is significantly higher than it is for stenting. So why is cabbage better than PCI? Well, look at this. You've got a patient who's got a stent over here, and you've got a patient with a lesion here, and who's got other lesions in this coronary artery, which are not really demonstrated on this diagram. So PCI treats the isolated lesion in the proximal vessel, and the complexity of the lesion affects the outcome. How effective the PCI depends upon the complexity of that lesion. Cabbage bypasses the proximal two-thirds of the vessel, where the current lesion, this one over here, and future threatening lesions uh, uh, occur. So the complexity of the lesions is irrelevant. It doesn't affect the efficacy of the bypass that you do, <laughs> unlike PCI, which is actually treating the lesion itself. As the name suggests, bypass surgery is simply bypassing the problem. Um, and so this advantage of cabbage will persist even if stent restenosis is zero. In other words, with bioabsorbable stents that claim extremely low restenosis rates, it doesn't matter because the point is the advantage that cabbage demonstrates by bypassing not just that lesion that's being treated, but future threatening lesions will always persist. And it, as far back as, uh, as 2006, the cover of The Lancet uh, said, and this is The Lancet, which is a medical journal, in view of the survival benefits shown for coronary artery bypass grafting, the real controversy is why patients with symptoms and anatomy known to benefit from the procedure are still submitted to percutaneous coronary intervention. So 
Now, the lemma is protected from atherosclerosis, and we don't know why. It's the unquestioned standard for surgery, uh, sorry, in surgery for coronary artery disease, and in fact, it's an important metric in the STS rating of institutions, uh, which uh, uh, there's a star rating that institutions are given uh, based on your STS outcomes, and uh, there's one, two, or three stars, and 10 to 15 percent of the star rating, which is a very large weighting, is based on your usage of the left internal, internal mammary artery. It needs to be more than 97 percent of patients. But so the survival uh, uh, benefit from cabbage, is it cabbage or is it the lima? We don't know. It's impossible to fully dissect the independent benefits of the IMA versus SVG in the same patient. There's no head-to-head -head trial of SVG-only bypass versus stents because it wouldn't be ethical given what we know about the lima and the role it plays in survival of patients. Uh, I need to go back one. Um, so any comparison of SVG to stents would be quasi-scientific at best. Nonetheless, most surgeons and cardiologists agree that the majority of cabbage benefit rests with the IMA. And of course, this was shown by Loop in his classic paper in 1986, and a follow-up uh, by the Cleveland Clinic in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery in May of 2009, uh, which looked at almost 5,000 patients with a patent lemur that came back with symptoms. They'd all had bypass surgery, had a patent lemur, came back with symptoms. They showed that um, repeat intervention for other coronary artery disease may help symptoms, but there was no survival benefit for intervention if the lemur was patent. In other words, they didn't live any longer if you reoperated on them, if you gave them PCI, or if you treated them medically. As long as the lemur was patent, you could help their symptoms, but you couldn't do anything, uh, uh, but, but there was no impact on longe <coughs> longevity. We know that vein grafts aren't very good, and this is one study, the PREVENT study, which showed that there was uh, um, uh, almost a 25% failure rate at one year. Uh, this was uh, angiographic uh, failure rate at one year for vein grafts. And we know that stents are constantly evolving. This is an old slide from 2010, but essentially, you know, a target uh, lesion revascularization rate of 2.5% uh, is extremely low when you look at the fact that vein grafts fail at a rate of 20 to 30 percent at one year. The FAME-2 trial looked at patients with stable coronary artery disease and at least one stenosis with FFR less than 0.8, randomized them to medical therapy versus FFR-guided PCI, and basically showed that PCI was superior to medical therapy. The trial actually was stopped uh, after uh, 888 patients uh, by the Data Safety Monitoring Board because there was already a clearly demonstrated difference between PCI and medical therapy. So PCI is very good at treating what it's good at treating, which is focal proximal lesions. So um, I won't go over this, but the, uh, uh, but the latest guidelines for revascularization from the American Heart Association, I believe, are from 2012, and these were updated in 2014 by the European Society of Cardiology. You, it, it is uh, uh, something that you should look at because it's an up-to-date way to get a review of the literature. Every single recommendation that is made is backed up by references over here that you can readily look up, and it provides a basis for you making the decisions that you will be making every day in your clinical lives. So future trends, the lemur for life, stents for symptoms and best medical therapy. I think a multidisciplinary approach for coronary artery disease is going to be essential. It's like cancer. It's, it's, it's not one thing. It's incredibly nuanced and, you know, decision making can be very difficult. Shared decision making, I think, leads to better decisions in these, in, these, in these patients. And we've started doing that at our institution where twice a month we have an ischemic heart disease conference. We've had that for at least five years now. We've just started an ischemic clinic where basically patients with ischemic heart disease are looked at by more than one set of eyes so that we can come up with the best plan for these patients. Uh, there will be a convergence of best medical therapy, PCI, and cabbage. The syntax score has been a major contribution. The role of hybrid procedures, that's a combination of PCI and cabbage, is as yet undefined, but there's a big um, um, uh, NIH-sponsored trial that's uh, 
that's about to start, and we are, our institution is, uh, is uh, participating in that, that we hope in two or three years uh, uh, will, will give us some, some answer for this. And I do think that a heart team approach, just as, being, just, as being, just as is being used for valvular therapy, is essential for the optimum care of patients with coronary artery disease. Thank you.